And just having a look at the flags, it's unlikely to rain. Asif Karim coming into the attack. Bowled quite well in their last game. Five wickets in an in innings on one occasion. Whoa, that spawn. That spawn. That is a terrific delivery because it not only did it spin, but it spun quickly. Adjustment from Ricky Ponting. And he's very lucky. Sharp chance by the looks of things. Watch this turn, it just opens him up beautifully. Had to late adjustment. Did it carry just to the left hand? Hitish Modi. Oh, he's having a little bit of trouble. He's bowling a good line to him. He's having to open up to play it on the leg side, then it's spinning away. That's got to be out close. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well bowled. Quicker delivery after having spun a couple. Fizzed in the quicker ball. Caught the skipper by surprise. Asif Karim retired after the last World Cup. Brought back into the team and have a look at this. Excellent delivery. Pitched in line and carried on with the arm. Beating Ricky Ponting and he was sure Karim that was out. Steve Buckner, as usual, says out and then signals out. 109 for three. It Darren it Lehman it. replaces his captain, Ricky Ponting. Averaging just on the 40 runs per innings, Darren Lehman. And that's a very healthy strike rate. And what a dismissal this. Beautifully bowled. It really is a great delivery because it's fizzed on with the arm and he's way too late. Ricky Ponting, way too late. Watch how the skid's on. Cannon into the pads before he got the bat even close. Terrific delivery. Deserved a wicket and he got it. Little chink in the armour here. Two new batsmen. Lehman's on zero. Simons has been there for 20 minutes but only faced eight balls. He's only got two. So just a wee bit of pressure. And pressure being applied also with the field of placing. Slip, forward short leg. It's 109 for three. And you have pegged Australia back over the last five, six overs, but they are still well ahead of what Kenya were at the same stage. Lost the same amount of wickets though. Well fielded. Usually a very good fielder, Colin Zabuya. Dropped a catch in the last game that most people were a bit worried about right over the top uh -oh. well he showed Ricky Ponting that he can spin it Kareem now he's showing well, Darren Lehman that he can and he's got a slip in place for the one that goes on with the arm. That's what normally happens. You bowl one that really turns a lot, surprises the batsman. The next one goes on with the arm, looks for the turn, and nicks it to slip. Like that, like that, it's gone. Very good bowling, very thoughtful bowling. He spun one, where Lehman had to adjust, then he lets it just go on with the arm, and Darren Lehman, having seen the one before spin, allows for that, gets a little outside edge. Nicely taken by the keeper, kept his presence of mind, stayed down, 
Straight in the gloves. Little wobble here. Out for two. 117 for four. Well, quite a few changes in this Australian batting lineup. It's Brad Hogg coming out to replace Darren Lehman. No Damien Martin yet. No Ian Harvey. Four wickets down. Well taken, but uh, more specifically, very, very well bowled. Little glance from Lehman, but he knows. So does Steve Buckner. Healthy edge. Up they go. Two wickets without conceding a run for Karim. Good bowling too. Asif Karim. Certainly using everything he's got. Bit of flight, bit of spin, arm ball. Just a little bit of pressure showing on the faces. And Brad Hogg, he's being surrounded. Good captaincy. There's man at bat pad with the helmet on. And there's also a man at slip. Oh! I'm getting a bit excited now, Asif Karim. That one spawned back. That's the quicker one again. He's uh, changing the pace nicely. The first one was lobbed up. New batsman. And then suddenly he lets one zip out. And he only just got down, Hogg. That's gone again. Three wickets for Asif Karim. Well, well, well. What's happening here? 18 overs, 117 for five, and it's been brilliant bowling by Asif Karim. 39 years old, changing the pace beautifully. Quicker ball followed by another slower delivery, which has gone straight back to him. Second ball. The crowd are ecstatic. So are the Kenyans, and you can understand why. 117 for five. We've got a change in the commentary box. Richard Benno is with Ian Healy. Don't worry about the crowd getting into it. What about the commentator's heels? Couldn't get Mikey off the microphone there. Brad Hogg, he needs a run, that's for sure. He's been bowling well, but he can do better with the bat in this tournament. Asif Karim has bowled superbly. Throwing that one up, floating it up, turning it just enough to get the inside edge of Hogg. And takes a good court and bowl catch. Three for none. Thank you. It's been such a pro-Kenyan crowd all day. They are on fire now. 19 overs gone, 122 the score. The run rate's fine. Wickets are a bit of a worry if you're Australian. There's the Australian squad at the moment. Matthew Hayden out. McGrath still to come. He's cool as a cucumber. Hasn't even got the yellows on yet. Ricky Ponting on the right out. Damien Martin still to come. He's nursing a sore finger we saw before. The crowd are on their feet. Asif Karim has brought them that way. Three for none. Off two overs. They weren't really the bloke scoring off him either. It's not as though you could say uh, well, they've been building him straight to fieldsman. He's bowled a uh, good line length. Typical, traditional style left arm. That's the first one they've been able to get to, and it was his bowling. He bowled it up there a half volley. Other than that, they've been trapped on the crease. I thought the three balls he bowled to Ponting, an outside edge to slip, which was put down or yorked the slips fieldsman. Then a potential leading edge, the next ball. Then the faster ball, which slid onto his pads for LBW. Brilliant bowling. Oh! I like the left armour. Didn't see much of him in the earlier game, but I saw much more of the leg spinner. But the left armour is as you would expect from, say, India. Someone bowling traditional style left arm. Very much like Ravi Shastri, isn't he? Short run up and high delivery action. He's a tall man, Karim. Played Davis Cup tennis for Kenya too. But he's a good, useful all-round sportsman. As 
uh, a bit of movement at the station out there and a bit of uh, yakkering as well. All enthusiasm. Yes, very short run up. Now that's the top spinner. Now we talk about the rotation of the seam of the ball with pace bowlers. It happens with the spinners as well. This is the one that got ponting. Watch the ball where it's rotating. Not just going sideways and then straight on. Oh! But not that one. Then he puts more rotation on that one. You saw the one that got ponting come off his index finger last, probably, and for the extra pace. This one, much more rotation. Pitches on leg stump and squares Ian Harvey up. There's a man, look at him. Tony Suji, he wants him. He wants in. One slip and him. It's 123 for five, 20 gone. The great thing about this is that the bowling has been good. Not going to uh, get anything there but a run out perhaps. Yes, the bowling's been good. It's not as though uh, these Trojans have come out and gone whack bang and uh, got out. It was a wonderful start, some exhilarating batting early on. That again is the top spinner with that side spin. He's a bit of an artist, this guy. They've sort of been robbed by a little old lady, haven't they? Didn't see it coming. And now they're relying on over-pitch deliveries. And that's what the Kenyans have to try and avoid. The over-pitched ones are getting damaged, but the others, no way. Four wickets in his career up until now, Sir Kareem. 32 matches he's played. This is 33. And that's the ball they're having most trouble with. And I can tell you that this has been uh, a red and green letter night for him, Kareem, because uh, so far he hasn't taken a wicket in the World Cup up to this moment. Oh! That's 132 for 5, 22 gone. going to need to bowl out the innings, I reckon. what he's done in the World Cup so far. Number 17 of two, number 20 off nine, and then a bit better tonight. Three for two or 4.2. Wonderful top spinner. He was the first Kenyan to take a wicket in a one-day international, as if Kareem slid on. I think they were supposed to spin, but it slid on. Natural variation might be the Jew and on the top of this pitch. Does seem to be some inconsistency, some spinning, some not. No, no, no I reckon it's the guy himself. He's uh, he's bowling the one that spins away from the right-hander, and then he's bowling the genuine top spinner. That's the way they feel. Do you rate the spinners, don't you, Rich? You mean he's doing all that on purpose? Uh, well. I think so. Not only took the first wicket, 
in a one day international. The first one to take five wickets. His best is five for 33. And just a pretty short career. 145 for five. Five overs, and he's going to take as much time as he needs. I think he's just saying to Steve Buckner, sorry, but I disappeared in the distance. Um, they forgot I was bowling. His follow through was any longer, he'd probably go on there. Pad bat looks like a tennis serve the way he starts. Played Davis Cup, looks a bit like a John McEnroe, very side on, minimal rotation over that front leg, and then wishes he had another yard of pace through the follow through. Good pace. The Australians are struggling to get to him, and he's not bowling any bad balls. 90 k's an hour. It's quite fast. Hard to get down and take a risk to. And when I said earlier, is the traditional old-style left-arm spinner. Always economy of action with those. 153 for 5, 26 gone. Three wickets for two runs. He's into his seventh over. Just recently came back into the game as well, Bumble. He had retired a few years ago. It's a lovely action too. And he's got everything. Orthodox finger spin, he's got a drifter. Got a top spinner, he's got good control. And he's of a certain age as well. Nothing to be had there. And Simon's trying to hit him off that very economical length. He said there's many a good tune played on an old fiddle. He's doing well. Looks a good bowler. Oh! Well, nobody can hit him. Just two runs. Three wickets and two runs off his bowling. Into his seventh over. Well, that would have stung, but still no runs off the delivery. Same as he's itching to go over the top straight. Oh! Well, bowled again, beautifully bowled, another maiden. Australia stay on 165 for five, even Steve Buckner is impressed. Four more needed for Australia, though. I think Andrew Simons might try and end it in this over. Won't find the geezer, though. Well, he's tried a couple of times to hit down the ground straight, mid on and mid off, or inside the circle. There's a carrot there. He's tried again. Just got too near to the ball. Every delivery that Kareem bowls is applauded by the crowd. In staggering figures, he's into his eighth over, the three wickets for two runs. What's this chat about? Keep mid on and mid off there, go on, let him try. Maybe a catch coming, maybe six as well. Full toss, still can't get it through.
Five dot balls. As if Kareem really bowling beautifully. He's itching to hit one of these. He's varied his pace so well. Well, a good Holden. Left arm spin. Well fielded. Beautifully fielded. Well done. Another maiden over. Collins of Boy at the man at point. Australia stay on one seven to one for five. It's great. Fantastic round of applause there for Asif Karim. Even Steve Buckner is telling him how well he has done. Shaking his hand. Well, I think Steve knows he won't get another over. That's the end of his spell. What a spell. Asif Karim. Another over. Scores are tied. And that's it. Full toss it through the wide mid on region by Ian Harvey. And Australia have gone on to win this game in the end quite comfortable because, of course, they have still got another 18 overs and four balls to go and five wickets in the hutch. Thoroughly enjoyed themselves, Kenny. It's a great heart from that performance against the best team in the world, Kareem, with fabulous figures. 8.2 overs, six maidens, three for seven. He might just have a chance of man of the match. Brett Lee with a hat trick will be up there. Adam Gilchrist with 67 runs in 43 deliveries. He's got a stump, so he should have. They've had the moments in this game here. They certainly have. They're just rocking for a time, Australia. Associate member. Not the test playing nation yet. They've done themselves no harm at all. They have beaten three test playing nations in this 2003 World Cup. And they can rightly call themselves the champions of Africa. They are the only African team left in this tournament and they are going to the semi-finals. Uh, Kareem acknowledging the applause from this crowd. He certainly bowled beautifully here tonight and they well appreciated it well he's got the ball as well he's got a ball he's got the stump and he'll get the congratulations of the australians it's australia that have done the business they've won easily in the end there's australia's batting card adam gilchrist lightning 67 off 43 hayden with 20 ponting 18 Andrew Simons played responsibly, 33 from 49. Then there's that wobble there, Lehman and Hogg, dismissed cheaply by Kareem. Ian Harvey also, sensible batting, 28 from 43. We didn't see Martin Bickle, Lee or McGrath. Five bowlers used by Kenya. Martin Suji, who had bowled so well previously in this tournament, got a bit of a tap today, three overs for 36 runs. Peter Ngondo given the opportunity of bowling the new ball with Thomas Adoya not in the team. Well, he responded well. 10 overs, 2 for 44. But Asif Kareem, 8 overs and 2 deliveries. 6 maidens, 3 for 7. Fantastic bowling against the world champions, Australia. Well, that's the overall story. Australia have won comfortably in the end, but they had a few shakes along the way. But a win by 5 wickets in the 32nd over is a convincing victory. Mark Taylor has left us and he's down by the player playing. And now the man of the match. Uh, there was a little bit of debate. There was a hat trick from Brett Lee, as Ricky Ponting mentioned, but the man of the match to receive the goal watch from Barry Richards is Asif Karim. <laughs> Asif. Magnificent spell of bowling. 8.2 overs. Was it three for eight? Yes. Was that all part of your plan? Well, I think it's one of those wonderful days I had. And uh, when I came in, when the Australians were very much in a commanding position. And uh, when I started bowling, I saw that there was turn on the wicket. And there was something uh, on the wicket. So I was varying my bowling. And fortunately for me, and with the grace of God, I had a wonderful spell. Well, you certainly varied your bowling very nicely. You changed your pace well. I noticed you also bowled a couple of deliveries from well behind the stumps. Plenty of experience there, right? Eh? Well, with, with 20 years uh, in the back, I, I better use that experience. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've retired once already. What was that all about? Now you're back bowling beautifully. 
Well, I retired after the 99 World Cup. I thought I had served the country uh, quite well, and there were some other domestic matters and businesses to handle. But the board uh, asked me to come back for the World Cup. And of course, I found it as my duty to come and serve my country and in whatever capacity they need me. Well, you've only played three games in this World Cup so far. Are we going to see more of you in the next, well, the next week or so? Well, next week is going to be very interesting, and uh, I hope I'm in the lineup next week and uh, hopefully do the job again. Well, mate, I'll, we wish you all the best for sure. You bowled beautifully tonight. Congratulations, Thank and you. good luck on Thursday. Thank you very much. Well, that's all for me down here. A pretty happy crowd. It's been a good game and an excellent fight back from Kenya, but a comfortable win for the Aussies in the end. Certainly was a comfortable win for Australia, and as you can see, they are top of the table. 24 points, played 3-1-3 in the Super 6 stage, and the top four teams, of course, go through to the semi-finals. First plays fourth, that means Australia plays Sri Lanka. And of course, that comes up live from Port Elizabeth on Tuesday, the 18th of March. The second semi-final, India play Kenya. Right here again in Durban, another day-night game. And that's on Thursday, the 20th of March. Should be an interesting contest, or both of them should be very interesting, as a matter of fact. Well, that's all we have got for you here. But Durban, this evening, Australia have set a new record. 15 consecutive matches without defeat, surpassing the 14 straight that they had in the year 2000. Well, hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. It's goodbye from us here in Durban.